Hi guys, well, welcome back to my channel. This is Anastasia here. In today's video, we will be discussing why it is that you should never run from your triggers. Let's start by making it clear into what exact sort of trigger am I talking about here? Now, I am discussing emotional triggers. Anything that causes some sort of emotional uprise out of you, whether that be anger, lust, frustration, these sorts of emotional triggers. I am not talking about addiction triggers specifically. Why is it? that people can have such an effect on us in which causes us to have such emotional reactions, whether that be something they have said, the way they are behaving. Why is it that we can grant another individual so much power over us? For instance, if somebody had said something online or said something to you and you feel this emotional rush within you, whether that be anger, frustration, etc., why is it that this person can cause this out of you? The typical response to this question would be, well, we are humans with emotions. And although that is correct, there is another side to this. There is something deeper to look at. And that is a person's ego. When the ego becomes threatened in any which way, this is generally what causes some sort of emotional reaction towards situations. Generally, the bigger one's ego is, the more sensitive they will be towards these emotional reactions and triggers. Because what is the ego? The ego is that sense of identity that you or I have created for ourselves in this world. The world we live in, the society we live in, is very ego-based. It is very ego-driven. But in fact, you are really not this ego. You are so much more and so much less than all of it. This ego is really quite limiting to ourselves. When the ego doesn't like something or when the ego is being threatened. The ego dictates what we like, what we should like, what we do, what we shouldn't do in most cases for the typical person. So when something challenges one's ego, the rational mind then begins to defend itself. The rational mind is directly correlated, connected with your ego. So when it becomes challenged or threatened, the ego, the rational mind, can actually start lying to you in some sense because it's creating this comfortability, it's creating this affirmation, it's creating this wall in which comforts you, right? To reaffirm the ego's validity. This ego is not real. It is not really who you truly, truly are. It's generally a bunch of created defense mechanisms in order to survive in this world or whatnot. When something can trigger you, when something touches the ego, this is a large sign that there is something to look at that will offer you some level of evolutionary growth within yourself that you can then examine. 
you can come to a space within yourself in which takes a lot of work for the majority of people in which you can become truly unagitated unbothered although this doesn't happen without putting in a lot of internal growth and self-work you see because why is it that what somebody else does or what somebody else says should or can have any effect on you why is it that somebody can say something that actually bothers you you are letting it bother you at some level but now we don't want to go and pretend that it's not bothering us and totally disregard or devalue the emotion if it's there it's there but the question is really why is it there if somebody was to insult you if somebody was to say something bad about you if you know in your core that there is no truth behind what they are saying then why would you actually need to respond why would you feel the need to respond this happens because whatever the person is saying has threatened or hurt the ego in some way the ego needs to prove itself the ego needs to keep its reputation so do not run from your triggers but examine them instead Take a deep look at what this person has done or said. Feel the emotion within you. And then ask yourself, what is it about this situation? What is it about what this person has said that is causing such an internal reaction? What is it within me that is allowing this to be caused? What sort of reflection is happening here? Because these situations are showing you some sort of reflection of what's going on internally. The external and the internal are directly connected and correlated. So I invite you not to run from them. I invite you to examine them, self-reflect and self-analyze. I didn't come to this space overnight. It took a lot of internal work but i can safely say that i am pretty unbothered and if you can upset me i'm very impressed and if you do manage to upset me i'm not going to get upset at you i'm actually going to take this as some sort of learning opportunity some sort of opportunity for growth because if you have the ability to actually upset me, there's something I have to look at here. I used to let a lot of things trigger me. I would spend time keyboard warring, war, keyboard fighting, whatever, online. But when you really look at this, it's like, okay, why do I feel the need to have to prove myself? Why should I? If what I know is my truth, then why should I have anything to defend? It is only my ego that wants this other person to see something in another way. It is only my ego that has to prove myself because really there is nothing to prove to anybody. The ego wants to be right, right? And so this is the way we have been programmed to function subconsciously. Although if you're seated in core truth within yourself, there is absolutely no reason for anybody else to think that you are right. That is just a sign that your ego wants to be right so if you're the kind of individual that loves to learn wants to constantly expand and grow and evolve 
then you will not be running from people that trigger you or situations that trigger you. You will look them head on and start self-analyzing to figure out, to depict what it is about the circumstance that is causing that emotional uproar to take place within you. If there's somebody bringing a lot of negativity into your life, I'm not encouraging you to keep them around because that would be energy draining. But within circumstance here, what I am encouraging you to do is take the time to actually look at the situation from an internal point of view and stop externalizing the situations. This person made me upset, or this person did that, or that situation caused me to react that way because no, you are the one in control, right? You are human, of course, you have emotions, but these emotions can be more fully understood as part of your ego and so you do not need to let your emotions actually dictate your responses you do not need to allow your emotions to thrash you around and then leave you later on most of the time regretting the way you have responded there is of course a healthy way to honor your emotions to process and transmute your emotions and then there is the victim mentality. There is a corrosive way to go about it in which you are constantly externalizing the situations. You're giving your power away in this way instead of realizing how much internal control you're capable of and how much power you truly have. In this way, your triggers are your biggest teachers. Double T. Your triggers are your friends. Because of the opportunity, they can grant you. The next time somebody bothers you in some way, the next time you feel jealous of somebody, the next time you feel frustrated, especially if it has to do with somebody else's life and somebody else's behavior and which shouldn't have any effect on you whatsoever within a certain level here, depends what we're talking about. But ask yourself, what's going on internally within my mind, my heart, my body that is causing me to feel this way? There is something there to learn. Until you do, this external source will always have some sort of power over you. And if you are consciously attempting to avoid it and run from it, that only displays more power it has over you. I'm going to leave this here today. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, if it provided you some sort of value, please do consider giving it a little like or perhaps subscribing to the channel at this early stage of the journey. Thank you very much. I'm wishing you a beautiful day or night wherever you are in the world.